They told me I was too young. They told me I needed more training. I told them to drop dead. How ironic. I don't know how I survived that fall. Something strange must have happened. My pulse is beating like a drum, but my blood is running cold. I'm not sure what's going on, but I came here with a question. And I'm gonna find the answer if it kills me. Hello, I'm the Indie Critic, and it seems like independent roguelikes have been sprouting up all over the place recently. With the release of The Binding of Isaac bringing the spotlight to the roguelike scene, allowing for games like FTL, The Pit, Magicite, and plenty more to grab a well-earned spot in your roguelike collection. Now Crypt of the Necrodancer just charged its way to the list of top-tier roguelike games. However, calling Crypt of the Necrodancer just a roguelike game seems insulting to me. This game is a wildly imaginative take on the classic roguelike formula. While its incredible soundtrack made by Danny Baranowski is great to listen to, it's also an integral part to the gameplay as any other mechanic is. While most other roguelikes conjure up some dungeons filled with enemies that take turns when you do, Crypt of the Necrodancer takes us one step further. When moving or attacking, you will do so according to the beat of the musical track that is playing. Now moving or attacking successfully in tandem with the rhythm will benefit you with a coin multiplier while messing up will remove the multiplier. It can also hinder your intended movement, making you more susceptible to enemy attacks. Now when you first load up Crypt of the Necrodancer, the rhythm mechanic can make an already difficult game feel even harder. But I think you'll be surprised with how quickly you can pick up the skill. Now to help you, you'll have access to a visual render of the rhythm at the bottom of the screen. There are also calibration options for both video and audio to help meld the game to your current setup. You will have to quickly be able to time your movements and attacks in conjunction with the music without a visual aid, and soon, the concept of rhythm-based spelunking will feel almost second nature to you. Now if you still can't get the hang of things, you can opt to switch characters to the Bard, one of the many characters that you can unlock and play as in the game. The Bard removes the rhythm-based mechanics entirely, turning Crypt of the Necrodancer into a traditional roguelike game. It's still really, really fun, and a well-made experience without the rhythm play, however, I strongly, strongly urge you to stick with the core concept until it clicks, as the experience difference between the two feels quite substantial. The rhythm-based gameplay, besides just upping the difficulty a bit, is that it forces you to play things fast and loose. While most roguelike titles focus on turn-based gameplay, so you can sort of plan your moves in advance, which gives that game a little bit more strategy, but with the musically enhanced movement and combat system in Crypt of the Necrodancer, you will rarely have a moment to catch your breath. Crypt of the Necrodancer features a pretty full list of unlockable content and various modes to explore, in addition to the four main campaign areas to complete. Now, four areas doesn't sound like much, however, the layout of the maps, enemy variety, and bosses that you encounter are all randomized, which add for excellent replayability. Speaking of boss fights, each one in Necrodancer is incredibly memorable. Each one has its own musical theme that fits so well with the boss battle. My favorite has to be Death Metal, because, well, look at me. Death Metal has a shield and can move every third beat. It can only be hit from the side during his first phase, and if you hit him from the front, he spawns two to three bats, which have randomized movements. He has four phases, and I don't want to ruin the others, but it's an amazing fight. And the music is, well, fucking awesome.
Now some bosses are a little easier to comprehend than others, and boss fights at the ends of zone 1 through 3 are chosen randomly, which throws in that feeling of luck that's inherent with any roguelike game. There's going to be a little bit of aggravation from time to time, simply because of bad luck. Now this frustration is lessened with the diamonds. Diamonds allow you to purchase items from the main hub for the rest of the game, or until you choose to reset the items. These items range from health upgrades, different weapon spawns, armor, and even increased gold. This makes you feel like you're always advancing in the game, even if you're stuck on one of the zones. Hello. How's it going? While each zone may share some common enemies, the enemy variety in each zone is largely unique. Some weapons may feel overpowered in one zone and then be completely useless in another, simply because of the change in enemy behavior. This makes the all zone run all the much more difficult. Some enemy types may be buffed in later zones, adding more health or variants on the original behavior. After beating the four core areas, there is still plenty to keep players occupied. Crypto the Necrodancer also supports mods, and they are very simple to use. All you have to do is download a mod from the Steam Workshop and then activate it in-game. Many of the mods currently are changing the music or skins of characters, but time will only tell how far these mods go into the future. And last but not least, the soundtracks offered are absolutely incredible. You can switch between the three soundtracks at any point, offering up different tempo and musical styles across the three. With the main music done by Danny Baranowski, who created the tracks to games such as Super Meat Boy, Binding of Isaac, and Desktop Dungeons, just to name a few. There's also a metal remix done by Family Jewels 7 x who has done metal covers of Super Meat Boy, Binding of Isaac, and Legend of Zelda. He's also done much more, and you can check him out on his YouTube channel at youtube.com slash familyjewels7x. There is also an EDM cover done by A Revival, which I actually haven't had the pleasure of listening to yet. Now, if none of these soundtracks work for you, you can import your own music into the game, which works surprisingly well. With all this being said, my final verdict for the game is an outstanding 9 out of 10. The developers at Brace Yourself Games are amazing, super friendly, and very passionate about their work, and that alone makes the game worth the $15 purchase. This game is unique, fun, and a wild imaginative take on the standard roguelike formula that stands out as one of the elite. Make sure to pick this game up as soon as possible. You will not regret it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next installment of The Indie Critics.